Welcome everyone, this is the start of a new little series I'll be doing for the Age of Empires 3 Wars of Liberty patch preview for patch 1.10a, aka the Great War patch. In the previous uploads I've done, I've mostly focused on Great War concepts, on the tanks, the airplanes, all, all the exciting stuff for the patch. Now I'm going to sort of do a series of games. In each upload I will be going over a specific civilization and its changes. I'm going to start out with the most notable change, which will be the Dutch civilization. Now, as you know from playing vanilla, Dutch are normally associated with having villagers that cost coin, having banks, and being really centered towards mercenary shipments and training at the saloon. This is a very different civilization. Instead of banks, you will have about three different gatherers, all costing about, about um, it really depends on the villager. For instance, a settler will cost 100 food, a slave will cost about 70 coin, and I think the Hindustani slash Javanese labor, because obviously the British can get this feature as well for one of their marriages, as you've seen, will cost about 60 wood, I think. Yep, and each of these villagers will gather better from the resource that they cost, so Javanese gatherers will do good wood chopping. Slaves will be great on plantations, and settlers will also be really good on mills. They cost about a third of their pop, their build limit, which will still end up leading to about 99 gatherers in total. What this does mean, too, is that if you're low on a certain resource, you can still keep queuing up gatherers regardless. Like, if you run out of food you'll obviously be able to keep training the Javanese laborers of the slaves. But let's stop talking about, let's try a match. And I'll pick a, I'll pick a Latin American one. Yeah. We're going to just see how the Civ works. I'm going to try out some of their new cards and see the new roster that they have because their roster has also changed very radically. Let's give it a try. And by the way, before we get started, I just want to point out that we have a series of new maps that you'll be able to play in. Some of which you've heard of in the past that were removed for a period of time like Sierra Madre and Baya. Some of these are completely new maps that you'll be able to enjoy. This is going to be a pretty big patch overall. This is one of the new maps. This is Giajela. This takes place on the little peninsula up here in Colombia. You can see it right there at the tippy top. It's actually a scrubland desert. A lot like Arizona or New Mexico. It's actually not like the jungle-like environment that you're used to when you think of Colombia. Making it a very unique ecosystem. It's kind of cool that they created a map around it. Let's see how good this map is. Let's get started. Yep, desertic peninsula on the Caribbean coast of South America. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Looky here, we got all three of our villager types. Interesting, say the least. See, what I was able to do there is, even though yeah. my villagers okay. weren't going right onto the food crates, Commando? I was able to save a bit of time yeah. and get my villager queue up just by getting a slave to queue up first. I think for now, we can just stick to hunting. I'll obviously put the Javanese onto the wood because they gather better from wood okay. overall. Look at this nice little uh, icon here for killing tr treasure guardians. It's completely new. Spray them guardians and make them pray. Kind of funny because praying is no longer a thing in this mod. So I don't think they can pray anymore. They just die. 
All right, so let's Hello. let's go with settlers for now because these these are going to be better at gathering food. And as you know, food gathering is very important at the start of the game. It might actually behoove you to just keep all of your villages on food at the start, but I'm just going to keep these Japanese on the woods since they seem to do better at that. That way we can cycle through and get hunting dogs a lot quicker. Sure. Pick Hello. up all of these scraps. Yes. Won't help you face Humble my life. military might. I'll get one... Mm, get one more settler. I think we can go up with like 15 settlers probably. Commando? Okay. Keep it simple. Yeah. Okay. I actually moved one of my slaves onto coin as well because these slaves are quite good at coin gathering. Adish? And I, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my market up now, as, so I can get the hunting dogs technology rather quickly. And then as soon as we hit about 50, we can actually move these back onto hunts to help us age up quicker. Get that hunting dogs technology. Yeah, get away man, get away while you still can. Ooh, look at this. Uh, this is the Wayu native settlement. This is a uh, new native settlement that you previously were unable to access that has been added to this new map. Look forward to seeing some new Wyand American natives on some of these maps. The Wayu are obviously a cavalry native. That the Colombian Civ in the past was able to ship to their home city, but they never had a formal native settlement. Hello. Now they do, so that's definitely going to be an advantage to pick up on this map for raiding purposes. Uh, Peru's already up in age. We're going to have to come up with a solution to that very quickly. Yeah. All these icons in black are the new Dutch cards. They're going to need new iconography before the patch releases. But from what I've seen, they do work. Let's scout around. Oh, this is kind of neat. They actually put the coastline of the peninsula in, in the map as well. So they tried to keep it as real as they possibly could to the geographic area. I'm looking forward to trying some of the other new maps as well. Hopefully when I'm doing new civs, we'll use only the new maps on. instead of the old ones. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Upper Hooft. That looks good. I'm going to get shore leave so we can make some marines. You know, marines Hello? Marines are pretty fun. How talker. Claire. I'm going to warn you though that uh, marines are a completely different sort of unit now. They don't behave the way they have in the past. What Marine Sword do now is is they're more centered around being more anti-ship and anti-siege. Like anti-artillery. Their multipliers have been redrawn a bit to not make them a guard against all units like they've been in the yeah. past. Because as you know previously, you could use a Marine to just about kill any unit type okay. in large numbers. Skirmish, Scout. Assault, yes. ship, anything yes. really. Okay. That's why you always saw civs like the U.S. Come just on. winning yes. by pure marine okay. spam. Now they're a little bit more in control, making other units a little bit more valuable now to create. Commando? Another way you sell them. Yeah. That's cool. Yes. Interesting, it, the bots know how to create immigrants. This is actually kind of neat, because in the past, the bots usually didn't bother making any immigrant units. Now it seems like the bot has a favoritism towards making the immigrant units. I'm gonna grab this coin from him. Yeah, I'm gonna steal that. I'll just show you what the new stats of the Marine look like. Also make some flank wars. Some of you might be wondering, wait a second, why, why are flank wars available in age 2? Aren't they like an ultimate unit that should be in age 4? They're no longer the ultimate unit. The sort of ultimate unit they got now is the flank 
the Zwart Holander, actually. The Zwart Holander used to be a real decree unit you got from the church. They replaced the old Stadthalder Musketeers. Now you can make them from the barracks in age 4. Along with the Marchazi, which is another ultimate unit they get access to. Because remember, the Dutch Civ, when it's completed, will actually have three different ultimate units. I, I don't think they've added the third one yet, and I don't think they're quite sure what that one's going to be yet. It could be a number of different things. I think personally it should be the Red Lancer, maybe. Because Red Lancers are pretty notable for being a Dutch unit in AOE 3 games, including D. But they, they could probably have a good number of different options when it comes to finding a good third ultimate unit for them. The flank orb will be more or less an ASAP now instead of an anti-scrum. Its range attack is designed to be good against maneuver units like Dragoons. The melee is going to be good against shock units, with multipliers similar to that of a pikeman. So if you've played the Ottomans in D and you make a lot of ASAPs, you're probably going to like this unit a lot. Also note that they replaced the standard musketeer for the Civ, so you won't be able to make any standard line infantry. You'll have to rely on these and take their benefits and their disadvantages to heart when you're making them. They do actually do a bit more range. They have a bit more range to them than the line infantry, which can actually be a bit of an advantage even though their attack is a lot less. You have a bit of kiting potential with them. What we're going to ship now would be... This isn't going to be really useful here, but this would basically make the trade routes a lot better and have a bigger bounty to them. Slaves and Raiders are trained much faster. Let's get that. Might be able to catch up on resources a bit if we go with that. Let's put these laborers onto wood. Yeah, I'm going to try to get about four more settlers on this mill so we can get full gathering from it. The reason why I'm not going for this hunt down here is because let's see how good the farming can actually be with this little added bonus. So he's going to be rushing me with some Lance Arrows and with his Sappers. As you'll note here, these um, Marines actually have some fairly good multipliers against these siege units. Clark. Yes. Making them quite okay. good against sappers. And actually, these marines will actually do quite good against grenadiers as well. Because, remember, grenadiers also have the siege unit tag. Yeah, so... How are we looking militarily? I mean, I think we're looking alright. You might want to get, uh, I don't know, Uper Hooft makes your explorer stronger, and he can build cheaper plantations and mills, and gives him a dog, too. That should be pretty good. Let's try that. Let's make ourselves a doggy. Oh, wait a minute. Alright. So, it looks like economically we're doing pretty well. No complaints there. I'm going to try to put down a house. Right now, we're really good against any sort of Lancero or Yanets, I think. We should try to add a little more anti-inf in the form of Grenadiers, probably. Well, so let's build, a, build ourselves a stable and see what they got for Calvary. Or oh, never mind, looks like uh, we got a ourselves an assault unit for them. Let's take this out with melee. Ooh, nice. Uh, ooh. Get that one. Good. What's up with all these assault units? That's 
kind of annoying. I'll use the grenadiers to take it down back quicker. This blood is in love with assault units. I think we just get rid of those Graneros and we'll be fine for now. Is he, did he build a... I think he put a fort right here because the butts were going at me. Completely. Yeah, I think the butt has a fort nearby, that's why the... In that case, I'm just gonna make some more flag boys, probably. And let's get a fishing dock as well, since we got a nearby water area. Do you have any other mines we can utilize? Yeah, let's, let's um, move our slaves down to the salt mine here. It's always good to see on maps unique resources that aren't in vanilla. Adds a bit of color to the game. I mean, at this point, you could probably even justify trading off some of your wood for coin just to keep your queue up. It's nice that we're going to begin amalgamation now. It means we're going to be, be pretty ahead in our eco. Uh. And then I think I'll just stick to wood for the rest of the time until we can get up. Hello. Yeah, we can make about 33 of them since it's divided between three different gatherers. And now that I think about it, I know that uh, Peruvians can't make falcs. So those cannons were actually probably the San Patricio cannons of the Irish. The fact that the AI knew to produce those with its immigrant element is actually kind of interesting and intriguing. That actually makes bullets from Latin America a lot more intimidating now, since an AI that can use immigrants is quite strong. It means that even if they run out of cards, they're still going to be pumping out a lot of units. Even after its bell plans for training expires. Commando, Timmerman. Let's get the coin out. We can show Hello. the world decrees a little bit later. We're doing pretty good right now. Haven't had to do any sort of monster trucks or anything this day in the game. Clear. Just keep making these. I mean, if he's going at that rate, he's probably going to just keep on. Um, Charging in with the Skultas. In which case, having that type of you, it's probably going to be the way to go. Huh? Yes, yeah, stable, see what they got for cav options. See, they get. Dragoons instead of the writers. Because, as you see here, they actually get the Marchazi as a ultimate assault unit similar to the Machetro. Thus, now they use the generic Dragoon as their maneuver. You can train Zwart Homelanders in the capital ages, the Ashanti Prince. That looks pretty useful, so let's get that. We can see what the Zwart Holander does. We can make some more flank wars. I think we're doing pretty good right now. I'll make some Hussars so we can meet shield a bit with them. Other than that, I think flank is the way to go. Especially if he's going to be spamming shock units like that. Climb. 
Boy. Well, I think in general we're doing pretty good on our bill count. We're gonna probably be nearing our bill limit pretty soon. That would definitely be a good idea to attack once we have a big army. So, because you don't know what this bot has in mind for us. Support Hollanders. Heavy range infantry. I don't know what it does though. Build a plantation with them. They are quite expensive though, so they must do a lot. Hello. It's actually well the thing it mm, I think it's kinda cool I just know is, is is the ultimate units cost the same resources as their native part of the Dutch Empire. Like the Marchazi, since it's from the East Indies, costs wood like its villager does, the Zwar costs coin just like the slaves do. When they finally have a Dutch ultimate unit from the Netherlands, they'll probably cost only food. So, this whole idea of having three different realms of their empire is very evident in the way that they're structured. A lot of attention to detail was done to that zip bonus. I'm just going to capture these whales, since you can. I doubt he's going to go water. It would also be kind of cool to scour around and see if this is an actual peninsula or not. Does the bot have both okay. native settlements? Only one. We'll have to see. Okay. Yeah. Timmerman. Lankwars gain increased speed and can now be trained from redoubts. That's kind of useful. Let's try building a tower and seeing if you can really make these from the towers. That would probably give them a lot of um, defense and a lot of map control abilities. Ooh, that that wasn't nice. I wasn't expecting that. What are these? They're sculptors and horse grenadiers. Heroic horse grenadiers? Why are they heroic? Sneaking up on a man like that isn't heroic at all. Kind of cowardly. Oh, that's a lot of assault units. A whole lot of them. I don't know if we can kill them all. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's, um, it didn't unlock him at the readout, so we'll, we'll have to report that as an issue. Now, it is cool that they do have a better movement speed, though. That'll definitely help out in defense. What we should do, though, is put some more readouts up. Because even if we can't train flackers from them, the fact that they have some... Some uh, anti. Uh, I'll target the skirmishers with them. I mean, I think we're all right right now. What do you think? I think it's a bit of a fluke that they even got in. Just build a lot of towers. I feel me what's there. Oh yeah, I mean, I think we're all right. Build a town center too to help defend. Hello, Claire. I think we're fine. Are you still an age behind? Your mother would be so ashamed of you. Attacking a blind man that doesn't see it coming, your mother would be ashamed of you, young man. Look at you sneaking up with me with more of these stupid sculptors. Lucky thing we have all these towers though to put holes in them. Let's 
It's a power tower spam. Yeah, just fish him in, I think. Let's get some um, infantry combat. Give these guys a bit of a kick. They clearly need against these. Oh, they're actually an age behind in upgrades and they still seem to be countering them pretty well. Kind of impressed, actually. Let's get some, uh, trade off some of our resources so we can get some slaves back onto here. Hello. We kinda need that right now. Yeah, I mean, we're doing alright. I think we're doing fine militarily. I'm gonna get some more maneuver though, because if he's going to sculpt the spamming, we're gonna probably want a lot of these dragoons to deal with them. May as well get the first plantation upgrade as well. That will also be very helpful in keeping him at bay. Maybe deterring him a bit from pushing with those. Oh, he's gonna just keep spamming these things, isn't he? Seems like it. Oh, let's just get some... Uh, Put them straight on here to help build the uh, Oh, he's already upgraded these to industrial age of sculptors. Nasty. Yeah, I think once we get like a group of the sculpt of the dragoons, he's probably gonna have a lot less power in attacking us so easily. Might also want to get Range cavalry cackle as well from the arsenal. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, if you attack them with a group of dragoons, they're usually pretty. Uh, I still don't like the fact that they're still getting in, though. Yeah, these escoltas can be pretty annoying. Let's get Cav Combat, buff him up a bit, and I'm get like Cav Cackle, and we can really kite these down effectively. Luckily, I have plenty of wood, so let's build ourselves an arsenal. Let's get an arsenal. Yeah, like Cap Cackrel, that will give us a lot of strength in dealing with these units. I'm just gonna put these onto the plantation so we we're doubling up on our resource gathering. Yeah, good luck with that, man. I'm just gonna keep... See what a big difference using maneuver is against assault. The whole army has survived effectively. That's why you have to make sure you pay attention to tags in the tag rework. Because if you use the wrong unit tags, usually... Wow, we have a lot of um, villagers I forgot about here. Let's get them out. Let's get them out. Okay. Hello? 
So we're actually in better economic shape than I thought we were. Yeah, that looks like it. Hello, boer, commando. Boer. Klein. Yeah, it looks like once you get the hang of things and you really start to pay attention to the tag rework, then your bot enemy becomes a lot less scary to deal with. Yeah, really, I don't think this bot's really going to pose much more of a threat to us, really. Because I could just keep uh, trading off resources and getting more dragoons as needed. I'll also add some uh, add some flank wars in as well. Diversify the army a bit. Do we have all the possible redoubts we can get? Yeah. We've maxed out our redoubt population. Let's take over another whale too. Since we can. Get gill nuts on it. See, once once you get the hang of your army, bots become a lot less dangerous because then you start to see patterns and the way that they attack you. The bots trying to be a little bit tricky by making scout units now, thinking, oh, he's not gonna be able to kill me in range anymore. But what the bot doesn't realize is, is all I need to do is simply go into melee with these dragoons and. They become just as counterable. He also is training small groups of Braneros too, probably in response to seeing Dragoons. So it's good to see the bot being a little bit responsive in its actions. Commando? Commando? Let's get a coin gathering upgrade. I think yeah. we've effectively survived this situation quite well. As you can see here, Dutch are really good at working with plantations and mills. With the yeah. slaves doing good with the plantation work and the settlers yeah. doing good with the food work. And you can always keep your Javanese on the wood and they're going to do a really good job on that. I think the improved gather rate is like 10%, so it's like adding an economic theory to it. It's not a whole lot, but it's certainly something, and you can clearly see it making a bit of a difference here in the output. It'll be fun to see what the bot tries to do next, because the bot's probably a little worried seeing that I'm going with a lot of anti-shock. Maybe they'll try to make even errors. In response to that, bots seem to get really confused when you build mixed armies. You know, they're really good at spamming one or two things. And when it comes to doing mixed stuff, then they get a little confused. Queue up some more slaves. Let's get some grenadiers too for anti-infantry. They're also good against shock when they do their throw. So he's doing, oh he's doing mercenaries and uh, Torah, so he, he shipped in uh, mercenary card it looks like. Interesting. Might actually put these, yeah I'll put these in the melee, it'll be even more effective. Yeah that, that would be even more effective in this situation. Yeah, these are the Immortals. These are Morachukos. So they're a maneuver unit. They can hunt, hunt for meat. Get these out of here. Biggest threat is these Braneros and the Gwani. These are mercenary Tralkatupes. So basically super tanky Mapuche uh, skirmishers. It's funny how I've been making flank wars this whole time, but I even got on the veteran upgrade form yet. Kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think what they should do with the Dutch is just give them red lancers as their assault, you know. Because they seem a little bit meager now that they don't have an assault unit. 
before they were walking with the turrets there. Now they don't have that at their disposal. Makes them look a little bit weak right now. It's great that you have the Marchazi as a foot assault, but it would definitely be good to have a Curse there as well. To be like a stronger assault option. Get some more damage on my infantry as well. Seems like you want these uh, flank wars to be the backbone of your army in general. You don't do too shabby. I mean, you get the job done. That's the most important thing. Eventually we can think about the world, the Kretex. Get the capital up so we can be ready for that. Get some fishing hooks too. Help it would help with the gathering. I'll put a fish on the here and get some of this fish nearby. Yeah, it does make the building cheaper overall, not just when the explorer builds them. It's good to know. Commando? Yes. Okay. Oh, we're doing good economically. Yeah. Really good. Huh. I'll just grab these bananas over here. I like bananas on this map. It's good to see bananas instead of just ordinary berry bushes. I don't know if the desert in reality has bananas, though. I wonder what went into that choice. So now he's going for Lanceros, Escoltas, and Natives. These Natives are scaring me a little bit. Because these natives are actually an anti-shock. Let's get some more flank wars out to deal with them. Swarb Bodoquieros. I think Peru can make them as well as Grand Colombia. They probably have their own native settlement now, to be honest. We'll have to see if we find them on one of the maps in the future. One thing to keep in mind with Grenadiers is now they take about a minute to recharge their grenade throw before it was only 45 seconds. It was up a little bit to make grenade throwing less broken in large pitch fights. Yeah, I'll get the Royal Decree now. Oh, they got a lot of Royal Decree techs. these warts as well. Didn't actually get to look at the formal stats Commando. of this wart Hollanders okay. yet. Yeah. Treaty of London greatly increases the bill on the slaves, but reduces the limit of laborers and workers. To save those trees of Sumatra and Gold Coast. Ah, so this Basically, we'd, let's get a uh, Treaty of London. 
get our slave laborers up. Ah, see, so it actually reduces their bill limit, but makes the slave one like that of uh, 63. Interesting. We'll do that now because it looks like our problem now is getting coin, so we could really use a lot more plantation gatherers beyond maybe the normal build limit. And eight settlers, so we'll be able to pet, get an extra mill with that, even though our one that's already expired. Hello, Timmerman. Commando, Timmerman. Claire, Timmerman. Let's do that. Yeah, see the bot's kind of struggling now, but doesn't really know what to do anymore. It's also... Let's see how much a great warage costs in like a normal game too. Once we hit Imperial. That will be good to see because as you see here this actually gets more expensive the more units, enemy units and buildings that are on the map. Commando. Commando? And mercantilism now. Yeah. Messy. Commando. Hello. Ik ga. Ja. Ja. Put a mill up here. Commando. Okay. Timmerman. Ja. Get some Timmerman. gathering up in this area. Zie ik. Mars. Lak zonagen. Mars. So these marchers actually maintain a splash attack, like the Machetra does, and not as a charge like the um. Mars. Postuni does. That's that's actually pretty good because that means that this assault unit is actually quite powerful in the late game. And that makes me think more and more that the food um, ultimate unit should really be the Red Lancer because it would contrast as being an assault unit that's mostly anti-infantry instead of just splash attack. Okay, yeah. The Zwart Holander appears to be an ultimate unit that is like a really strong musketeer with really good hand armor. It reduces about half the damage experiences in melee. It's pretty good. Pretty good for a line unit. I think we're good to finally start pushing back on them now. Where are these Bodekiyos coming from, by the way? I don't know, actually. 
Definitely rocking this new roster for the Dutch. In Imperial Age, get the capitalists so we can get some coin back. Oh, so this is uh, actually a. Oh, this is a way you. Japanese on the other side. So looks like the block goes for a variety of different settlements. Because it's obvious that the block probably made a Japanese immigrant center a. Um, Chinese one, Japanese one, and maybe even an Irish one. So, it's interesting how it goes for a variety of different immigrant settlements. I've been in a variety of different units. So, what natives do we get here? I think that's the way you have, right? Hmm, doesn't have the native unit though. Goats, mail gathering. Bonus against mercenaries and outlaws. That's pretty cool. Pretty nice stuff. Yeah, yeah. Commando. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually not that bad. I mean, 260, 25, it's probably because the bot isn't really doing that well. I can imagine if you're facing multiple opponents with bigger armies, then the cost would probably be astronomically higher. Let's get that for now. Yeah. I mean, we could put these onto this plantation, I think. Yeah. Hello, ik doe het. Hout hacker, Claire. Hout hacker. Zie ik laat ze maken. Ja, ja, ja. Commando, ja. Okay. Hello? Now I'll move my um, infantry around the native settlement here. I'm gonna just wait for this green war age to finish up and then I'm going to yeah. start making my yes. command center to start okay. pumping out great yeah. war buildings. Yes. Okay. Gonna need some wood for that though, so let's get all the wood gathering text. Let me get circular saw. Let me move the fishing yeah. ship out a bit. Yes. Here. I actually want to go around the periphery to see if this is a real peninsula or not. Any other sort of little cards we need to look over? Um, just this one that... Why is this available again? Yeah, that we definitely got to report that too. Really shouldn't be available again once you've sent it once. Gonna get my truck now.
मैं करूंगा जा रहा पढ़ारा get another truck I'll put down my supply depot let's go with the homing pigeon I said yesterday when we were going through the tutorial that you get one of these for free I'll be able to put this homing pigeon right over their base and it'll be immune from getting shot at oh this is cool yeah I wonder why these Bills are all right. It's a little warming. It should be chopping trees or something. Yeah, another truck. Oh, flamin' morphers, these are good. A couple of those. I'll build my oil rig now. Get some machinery. Or I can get an air get an airfield. Put this airfield in here. I'll actually get some rifle grenadiers too, since this enemy appears to be going with the blood of the salt units. Oh, this yeah. is definitely a okay. peninsula. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. another factory I guess too yeah I can get no I'll actually get this combat card it seems to affect both of the ultimate units come on go oil rig um, yeah another oil rig we're gonna need one so put a bunker up over here to defend. See, with only one oil rig, you really don't get a lot of oil. You need to build aircraft. You usually need about three or four to really keep a constant flow of bombers and other aircraft. Yeah, I, I just want to get like... I'll actually get a Zeppelin instead. The Zeppelin is probably more cost efficient than a bomber. Because the Zeppelin can actually deal with the civilians as well. If we can still queue up a bomber after that, I'll get one. See, this would be pretty easy now because we got obviously have the bunker helping us, and then we got rifle grenadiers and flamin' morphers. Yeah, we're completely decimated now. Doesn't matter if he has a sculpt us because the units we have just counters them outright. Get an upgrade on the Marchazi, I think. See how they look. Do Marchazi get benefit from the They don't. Hmm. They only get benefit from the ultimate combat one. Yeah, let's go forward with this um, Dutch Zeppelin and cause some havoc. I'll get some bombers in too to help with the siege. 
Oh, what else do we got? We got Jap Lances too, right? From the Royal Decree. Yeah. I'm gonna drop the mustard gas right here. Patricia, is it? Flank Wars actually aren't interesting. I see here that they're only good against Rangers now. Hmm. Ooh, that's a good mustard guess. Look at that. Just total annihilation. Look at that. <laughs> that's the mustard gas we were looking for yesterday in the tutorial. It seems to do it right here. Yeah, we can we can give him some mercy and let him quit. Yeah, this is a cool map. It's a full peninsula showcase in the desert area. Definitely like the sieve too. I look forward to using the sieve in the upcoming patch against players. We'll take a bit again used to maximizing the different little bonuses that each of the gatherers has, but once you figure it out it's pretty pretty good option. Yeah. I re certainly recommend this sieve to anyone that likes playing uh, an economic game. Not that they have bad military options either, they actually got quite a, a wide variety of anti-shock options, it seems like. While also having a decent assault option. Let me know how you like this little playthrough. I tried to go through sort of everything that I saw along the way. Everything that made sense. And oh, look, uh, Jab Lancers too, yep. So yeah, this sieve has a lot of going for it. They don't really need... I'm definitely not too worried that they're going to be losing banks if I know they got an economy like this. Because even without the banks, they should be able to compensate with their agricultural economy. The resources that they were able to get with the banks. It's also kind of funny because, uh... Yeah. Well, anyways, we'll see you for the next one. There's certainly a couple of other sibs I want to do in this format as well for you. We'll go over them. See you next time.